this is Goose from JRI Shocks. Today we're going to be doing an install on a JK just like you guys are going to be doing in the driveway. Everybody's got a cool lift. All these shops are showing off all the cool stuff. We've got that too, but you don't. So we're going to be doing it in the driveway just like you guys are. So here's the only stuff that's going to make it easier for you. With your inner fender here on the passenger side, this little bit of plastic, it's a pain to get your wrench in there and tighten up our double shear clevis that we've got for the top of the shock. So if you can get an air saw or some snips or anything, this is just real thin plastic, you can just snip it off. That's going to make life a whole lot easier for you to get your wrench in there. All right, guys, so we got our little pieces cut off. Like you see, it's not a lot. Super easy for you to do. Got that fixed. All right, so now what we're on to, we're working on our new JK shock. What I wanted to show you is these come pre-assembled from us at the factory. There's two different brackets. There's a right front and a left front. This is our double shear clevis that we put. We're getting away with the rubber bushings and all that junk factory stuff. So it's got a clock in. There's a right side and a left side. It comes assembled on the shock. Don't just bring it home, get all excited when you unbox this thing and throw your brackets everywhere. There is a left and a right. But you'll see from these pictures how we're going to do it. So we can just unscrew that. And you can see that it's offset left and right. This is the side we're going to be doing for our right side. And now we'll zoom in and show you how to install that. All right, so now we're going to be installing the clevis on the right front. Here's a little trick. It's about the best you can do. This is the worst you're going to have it all day. So if you're going to cuss me, go ahead and do it. So if you'll take a pair of cre uh, uh, crescent wrench here, stick it on the back side of the nut. That way, this is going to be the visible side. You're not messing up the powder coat but if you'll hold that there that can be your hand you might even be able to get a friend to help you drop on your washer and your big nylock nut the more that you trim on your plastic the more it'll help you out now you can get in there with an inch and a sixteenth wrench I do like to suggest people Go ahead and get you a gear wrench. I know it's a weird size to have, but if you can just click that in there, it's going to make life a lot easier on you. Right, now that'll get you real close. Now you can take your bolt and position it how you want to be, which is the bolt straight out to you. You can just get that started a little bit. We're going to use the wrench, or you can get your crescent wrench in there and hold it too, and get your final good snug on that. And that's installing the clevis. And it's the same on the left side. The left side is actually easier because you don't have this big mess here to deal with, so you got a lot more room to work with. That'll get us moving on to installing the shop. All right, here we are, back on the ground. Remember, we're not using any lift. We're doing this real world. So what you want to do to help you out from fighting and cussing me out later is take the shock before you're trying to hang it from the top. Take your lower bolt out and just keep your monoball spacers in and see how it's going to fit in your lower mount here. You know, ours is just a little snug. You can take just that same crescent wrench we were using earlier and just get it on there and open that up a little bit. You know, you get those rubber bushings or maybe some other stuff that's been on there as you're wheeling this gets beat up. So do a little prying, make that a whole lot easier. We're still going to take and hang it from the top to start with, but this will save you a lot of time in the long run. All right, so now we're going to hang our right front shock. We place a sticker on the back there just to help you out in case you lay them in a pile to remember which it is, but it's always going to be the reservoirs to the back of the vehicle and can it out towards the tire a little bit. So now we're going to just slide this right up into our clevis. We'll do a little blue Loctite on our bolt here. And we can buzz that right in. Now we'll move on to the lower and I'll show you some tricks there. So this vehicle set at three. What we're going to do is we're going to move it to one that way, when you're pushing up on the shaft to install that lower eyelet, it's just a little easier to get it up and it's not going to fight you so much. All right, here we are again at the right rear. So we've opened up the lower mounts like we did in the front, just so you could slide in your shaft a lot easier and not have to fight that. But in the rear, you need to bolt up your upper first 
if you bolt up the lower you won't have enough room to swing up by the rear bar and all this mess back here so let's bolt up the upper as you notice we got plenty of room to swing around with all this articulation we got in our heim joints up top we've got some loctite already on this bolt and we're reusing the factory hardware in the rear uppers it's a nice bolt it's a nice flange bolt it's a good quality Now we can hang our lowers. So just like we did in the front, we'll take and move our compression adjuster to one. That'll make us a lot easier to go up. It's still a little bit of a handful. If you got a friend, this is a good spot. But if you can just kind of pull up on the shaft and push up there and we'll fight this in. While you're fighting, go ahead and have a little drift punch or your bolt. And that way you're not fighting things when you're there. Because when you're there, you're going to want to get that bolt in. I like to run the bolt in this way. That way you're not beating off. You know these lower shock mounts on JKs, you guys are always clobbering this stuff real bad. So you come in this way, it's a little safer. Nothing like hammering a bolt in. My dad would be real proud of that. A little Loctite. good now we leave this o-ring on here a lot of guys wonder if this is something that should be up in the seal but all we're using it for is a travel indicator it helps you guys out a lot when you're getting started and still adjusting bump stops we can just slide that up we're good to go and now we'll move on to how we're going to fish this big old long hose up on top of the frame rail so we can make our compression adjustments without having to get up underneath the vehicle get all muddy we can do an easy adjustment real quick so some guys are having to move your rear bar sometimes you got to move it back if you've extended your trailing arms so muffler's been relocated on this there's all it's a real busy spot back here this hose swings around it's no worries on that about binding so let's fish this up through when you're we'll get it up there and then we'll take a notice about how to adjust it from the top all right so this is going to show you the location of the rear reservoir and we're in the right rear just to give you an idea so you can see this little crook right here in the frame rail get my hand out of the way if you can get the middle of the can right at this it's going to help us out we've got this nice little rubber spacer here and i like to have the hose facing towards the front of the vehicle and the adjuster straight out to the horizon that way you can see everything good when you're wanting to make your quick adjustments so we'll just slide that up underneath and then you can take your stainless band clamp here and fish it in just like that that'll give you an idea of our placement now we'll go back underneath and show you how we're tightening that up and the routing of the hose so we've got our hose clamp lined up here you can just kind of keep everything where it is a little gun will help but you got to do it by hand that'll keep everything good and square there and it still looks nice from the outside so for hose routing that thing looks really long when it's on your toolbox, but when you see when you get it up underneath here, by the time you've came around your vent lines and everything, it gives you plenty of room for whatever situations, if you do have the muffler here still or your sway bar is still in the stock location. So find you some spots to zip tie that up there, but you know, notice that that can swivel around. The shock's going to articulate like that, so just make sure you got plenty of room when everything's tied up. All right, guys, we're all finished up here. This video was mainly to help guys out about the little tricks on these platforms trimming the right front the making sure your outlets fit in the lowers before you have to fight all that stuff we're not teaching you how to put on shocks you guys know how to wrench on your rigs you're doing it all the time so we just want to help out these little tips 
Be sure to check us out at JRI Shocks, all the Instagrams and the Facebooks. You know, send us some pics of you working on your stuff. We'd love to repost it. Thanks.